Welcome back. This is David Leach, and you're listening to Your Schools. And it is a pleasure once again to be joined by Beverly Braxton and Terry Mack. And we are here discussing a new initiative in Warwick that has been coined Family Central. And prior to the break, we were discussing... Uh, just how important it is to, to have a venue and have an opportunity to speak with one another, really, as community members and as parents and educators and how we can support um, probably the most important job out there, and that is a, the, the role of a parent. And before the break, I looked over at Beverly, and I, I could tell that Terry was nervous that she may get this question <laughs> in, in retrospect. But I asked, phrases like helicopter parent have made their way into everyday language, but does over-parenting hurt or help? And, you know, I, I've read um, that the happiest, most successful children have parents who do not do for them what they're capable of doing or almost capable of doing for themselves. And that's such a tricky, I know as a, as a father, you, you want your child to be successful and you want to make sure they're safe and they feel loved and they're not in situations where they'll be uncomfortable, and but uh, I don't know. Am I, am I doing a bad job? Am I micromanaging or overparenting? Or I... Well, I can try to answer that question. Um, um, just based on what I know about my own interactions as a parent and as a teacher, I feel that um, one of the things that identifies one as a helicopter parent in my understanding anyway, is that you're really you're you're too ready to um uh what's that word? It's uh enable. Um uh protect your child or keep them from doing or moving in a direction that you feel may be hurtful. And it's the case that the child has no you haven't you've lost confidence in the ability of your child as a human being to be resourceful and to um, be able to figure out problems. So I think what what helps keep us focused on what is the real role of parenting is to interact with our child in a way that connects us directly to what their needs are and talk to them. Is this something that you you're interested in doing and tell me more about why or if a child wants to walk along the sidewalk and which I love to do you know kind of think that they can balance themselves and yet they keep falling off that's one way that they really gain a lot of skill in what they're capable of doing oftentimes parents are so protective that a scratch to them seems like a major injury and really scratches are really a sign of a child wanting to reach and wanting to um, grow and by wanting to protect them from those injuries also sets up the message to them that you don't really believe in them or they're not capable of being resourceful or and it's really not a good message it really undermines their confidence do you want to add something to that? Yeah, I would like to add something. I think that that phrase, helicopter parent, and that way of parenting develops slowly for certain reasons mm -hmm. because I think parents, again, in response to fears that the media promotes, fears about the larger world, uh, pressures about getting ahead in the future, I mean, we all sometimes make fun of ourselves as parents for that reason. And I think one of the things the Family Center wants to do is create a safe, non-judging place where people can talk about the fact that, yes, that's how I'm parenting. How did I get to this place? I didn't, I don't want this, I don't intend this. And then with the support of sharing research and also workshops, skills and strategies, and then opportunities for children to have more uh, legitimate risk-taking experiences, we can then help parents kind of feel freer from that role. Um, and that's one of the, I, I, you know, that's one of our hopes for Family Yeah, Central. I think, you know, Terry, you reminded me of just this past weekend, my wife and I were at the, the new mall in Nanuet. I don't know if you've been there. It's an outdoor mall. Mm. It's, it's really, a really nice place to be. So uh, my children wanted to go into the Apple store. So the two of them went into the Apple store, and I said to my wife, let's go around the corner to this little tea place. And she didn't feel comfortable with that. Uh, now they're 13 and they're 10, and she wanted to make sure that we, you know, we stayed with them, and I respect that. And so we went back into the Apple Store with them, and then finally we went together to to go get tea. Now, when I was a youngster, I just, you know, I'm pretty sure they would have left me off to 
in the store by myself. And I, so I understand that parenting, uh, being a parent is often, um, you look at it as a way to minimize risk for our children, and perhaps those risks um, are deemed to be even more problematic and scary in our times than they were when I was growing up. Um, you know, it's certainly difficult for parents to hang back and let children make mistakes. And I'm getting back to Beverly's point. I think we need to, to do that uh, in, a, in a safe way um, so that growth can take place. Uh, but that balance is tricky. That balance is tricky. Because the mistakes, as they get older, the mistakes are bigger. I want to just pick up on what you were saying about that dialogue between your, your, yourself and your wife because we're really encouraging dads and grandfathers to participate in this process. And that dialogue between mom and dad with mutual respect can really is really enriching, you know, listening to each other's concerns and sometimes one parent may have more of that reassuring ability to say, let's let them go. I think this is a safe time. And that other parent, when there's trust, can say, all right, I'm with you. Often the mom is more the protective than the father, but you never know. And um, I think that that, because there's the, what's tough about parenting today, there, there, there is no simple blueprint, and there's no um, quick answer. It re requires a lot of reflection and support. And communication. Yeah. I do. I, I'm, I'm glad you made that comment, because I think one of the things that happened I mean, when I was a parent, I mean, when I was, my husband's passed away, but when we were raising children, I remember oftentimes we disagreed about um, things like that. And I, I realized in, afterwards in some of our reflections with each other is that really one of us really had a greater sense about a particular thing mm -hmm. than the other. And I feel the male role is so critical to this um, the rearing of young children because they have a different orientation, they have a different lens and oftentimes we as mothers don't necessarily because of our own fears and anxieties about being female or not feeling safe ourselves overreach in terms of protecting our children. In fact, one of the things I, I came across recently was that, and I've heard this over the last five or six years, there's actually less crime <laughs> in our world. Um, mm -hmm. But we still have that general, the media with the fear that th things are increasing. But really, it's safer now than it's ever been for children. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, those are great points. And, and, and perhaps some of the unknowns. So we have children now interacting uh, on the Internet. Um, in education, standards have the bar has been raised to, to, in some regards, and to in terms of academic standards. Uh, so, the work that comes home at times will create more um, of a challenge and perhaps confusion. And I, I know even as, even although I'm an educator, my child will take homework assignments, will bring home, homework assignments home now that uh, are not easy for me to sit down and just uh, share with him the answers or, or, or different ways to get to that. So that, um, uh, their world is a little bit different. I, th I think they are highly scheduled students. The students that I work mm -hmm. with in Warwick or my own children, uh, those, those schedules are, are, are tight. Um, so yes, a loving parent is warm and willing to set limits and unwilling to breach really that child's um, boundaries or psychological boundaries. Mm -hmm. But um, it's hard work. It's hard work, and it really does take uh, a village. So talk a little bit about what you envision. What would be some of the outcomes you envision from Family Central? In fact, when we return from the break, that's what I'm going to ask you. What are the goals of Family Central? Where do you see it, uh, how do you see it supporting our local families? Okay. Okay? So Great. you're listening to your schools, and this is David Leach. You're listening to your schools. This is David Leach, Superintendent of Schools in the Warwick Valley Central School District. And again, for anyone just tuning in, you are listening. Uh, we have some guests here today. I'd love for you to meet them. In fact, you can meet them if you come to the Family Central uh, event that's going to take place. And Beverly and Terry will remind us of that date in a minute. We've been having a discussion regarding the challenges of being a parent, to the joys, and also the challenges. Um, and I asked right before the break, what are some of the outcomes, some of the goals that you hope to accomplish in Family Central? 
Um, one of the things, so let me just start with our mission. We think it's really important to raise awareness and reduce the isolation of parents by sharing information and resources through parenting workshops for families. So that's one of the things that is really high up as a priority, to provide parents with information. We also think it's important that parents who have the sense that they want to do something different or to slow things down or want to build up a network of support that we really are interested in fostering for with them parenting communities where there's where they can reach out to someone or there's a regular communication about what their challenges are. We also want to create a resource network for families that includes volunteers from our community working together on behalf of families and children. And that's really critical because there's such a wealth of uh, talent and experience in our community. Many years ago, I, when I first started teaching, Warwick um, had a community resource list of people in the community that were willing to come into the schools to offer their special talents and, and um, skills. Something like that. I know that right now those people were working and you had to make a um, schedule, a type, you know, you had to meet their schedule, but a lot of those people are retired now. And those skills and those interests are still very alive in them. Mm -hmm. What about if we made opportunities for children to actually have apprenticeships with people from different areas, with, with different specialties? Or that we created a craft um, venue for young people to begin to use their hands again? I think what's really missing in our minds of our children is really concrete creating. Like creating in a way that comes from something longing from within and giving them opportunities for that. There's also grandparents and uh, other uh, elders in the community that are just would love to be the watchdogs of the community um, play groups. You know, there's no reason that children shouldn't be outside if parents are working. Maybe we could, maybe something would grow out of that where there would be an organization affiliated with, um, with grandparents who would be um, able to come to different blocks and say, you know, this is the time that we're going to be watching children play outdoors. So I think it's endless in terms of. Uh, what's possible because everyone has to um, contribute ideas, but I do think we're a very rich community in that way. What would you say, Terry? Yeah, well, I, <clears throat> I think what's exciting is that this process that Beverly has, has started is like throwing a very beautiful pebble into the pond, into a very expansive pond, and the ripples taking place um, will lead us in all sorts of creative directions. I think fostering the relationships between the adults in our community uh, is, is bet between the adults and the children is, I'm sorry, I'm, I, I apologize. I feel so oh. Saved by the Bell, we used to call that when I was a kid. <laughs> Saved by the bell. Uh, why don't you finish, finish that point, um, Terry? Um, that this this uh, this kickoff, which is happening on Sunday, November second, at our library from one to three thirty, is going to be, be the beginning of a dialogue of listening to each other in the same way that we want to uh, with our children. Listening, one never knows if you really listen what is going to bubble up, what is going to percolate, and we do have a very rich community with a history of a lot of engagement, a wonderful citizen activity in this in this uh, town, and we feel like everyone we speak with says, yes, I'm concerned, I want to be more involved, I want to do more for our children, and that's what, this is going to put this this theme and this concern in more center stage in our community dialogue. Yeah, what I think is wonderful about it, too, is often folks will look at the school as having the solution to all challenges, and while I think we have, we, the school should share in some of these solutions that are needed to support everyone, it's difficult uh, for us having really focused on academic achievement and, and when we recognize that we could do a better job in supporting families, um, having the opportunity to do that is, is, is difficult, as you both know as former educators, to, to carve that into our instructional program. Uh, and it really is going to take a community involvement, um, a community, and really even nationally, some of the challenges that we're discussing often come up during political debates for president, mm -hmm. to senators, et cetera. You'll hear these themes emerge, so it's not just specific to Warwick. 
but probably not just specific to these times. No. Um, I, I just want to mention one last thing that I think is also really critical. One of the things that Family Central has it's a, as one of its missions is the training of citizen volunteers to sustain the ongoing community leadership required for our movement. So we know that people um, want to be a part of this. We know that there's ways that we can improve the quality of our interactions with each other, develop better listening, communication, and that's one of the goals. How can we better communicate what it is that we want to do? Yeah, and I, I, it, looking at the role of educator or looking at the role in general of just adult, one of the most important things I think we do for our children is to present them with a, a version of adult life that is one that is healthy and appealing and, and worthy of, of uh, striving for, that exemplar. And it's not always going to be a parent. So that's why, again, getting the community involved, having educators and volunteers, et cetera, is so very, very important. Well, ladies, I'd like to thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you. I wish you a lot of luck. November 2nd, which is a Sunday, 1 to 3.30 at the library. Be there or be square, kids would say, Beverly. Yeah. your time. <laughs> and uh, please sign up. Call the library to let us know that you're coming. And uh, we'd love to. I'm sure it'll be a worthwhile experience for everyone. Wonderful. Well, thank you, ladies. And that's all for today. You have been listening to your schools. Until next time.